Are you wondering about different types of RF connectors used in amateur radio? Do you find terms like PL259, BNC, SMA, and Type N confusing? I have answers. Welcome to Ask Dave. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, with Ask Dave episode 35. I received a question from Miles, KD2LDV, who asked about various radio frequency or RF connectors used in amateur radio. Miles, thank you for your question. The Ask Day video series is here to provide answers to your questions about ham radio, particularly those of interest to those new to the hobby. This episode covers the PL259 and SO239 connectors, by far the most common on HF, the BNC connector, common at VHF, UHF, and used occasionally at HF, the SMA connector, often used at VHF and above. And we'll conclude with the rare but still interesting Type N connector that's important for high power work on VHF and UHF. Here are by far the most common connectors used in amateur radio. The one on the left is the SO239 connector and on the right the PL259 connector. The PL259 plugs into the SO239 and then a knurled outer ring is threaded onto the SO239. By the way, the numerical designators are leftovers from World War II, but now there are lots of variations that are all interoperable. Okay, let's look more closely. The male connector is often called the plug. The female connector is often called the jack, the receptacle, or the socket. All RF connectors have gender, either male or female, and I'm afraid that terminology has been around for over a century. When you order these connectors, you need to specify the gender. In the case of these common connectors, PL259 is male and the SO239 is female. Once in a blue moon, you will hear the pair referred to as UHF connectors, but mostly you'll hear the separate designators. In nearly every case, cables have PL259 connectors on each end, and equipment has an SO239 jack. You pull back the knurled ring so that you can see the little protrusion here. You gently push the center pin into the jack until the protrusion locks into a similar cutout on the jack. Then, being careful not to cross thread, you screw the ring onto the socket until it's finger tight. Never over tighten. This gives a very solid connection that's both electrically and mechanically secure. To disconnect the cable, unthread the ring until it is completely free of the socket. Then, using the connector and not the cable, pull the center pin out. These connectors are quite sturdy and will last for many years. I point out that this connection is not waterproof, so if you use this method to connect to an outdoor antenna, you'll need to waterproof the connection. There are different types of PL259 connectors available. The basic PL259 is designed to fit on RG8 coax cable, which also works for RG213. For smaller cables such as RG8X or RG58, adapters are needed. For decades, all amateurs soldered their own cable connectors, and solder type connectors are still readily available. In the past few years, crimping of the shield or outer conductor has become much more common. All commercial cables you buy with pre-installed connectors likely have the shield crimped, but likely the center conductor will be soldered. Let me give a brief demo of how that works. I'm using a toolkit I purchased from Quicksilver Radio. First, the crimp-on connector is in three parts, which are sized based on the size of the coax. This outer ring is slipped over the coax, and then this sleeve. I use this auto stripper to prepare the cable. It works by turning it around the cable this way.
The coax is then pushed into the connector and the sleeve pushed over it. Then this is inserted into the crimping tool. Then you squeeze like crazy. I found it convenient to push it down against a surface as my hands are no longer as strong as they once were. This center conductor is soldered so that all the solder is inside the tube and then the ring comes up like this. This is actually quite straightforward and to share a little secret, I now crimp all my cables. Sometimes you'll need to connect two coax cables together. To do this, you use a so-called barrel connector. A barrel connector has two female ends. So, a male cable connector goes in this side, and then another male cable connector goes in the other. All in all, it is important to note that a PL259 inserted into an SO239 presents a small impedance bump. Whenever two transmission lines meet in such a way that the impedance changes, even if for less than an inch, it will create reflected waves and thus slightly raise the SWR. So, in general, we like to have cable runs be uninterrupted, but sometimes you can't avoid it. The next most common connector you'll find is the BNC connector. It's a bayonet connector. The initials come from Bayonet Neil Konselman, named after the two inventors at AT&T long ago. I have a picture here of Carl Konselman taken in 1929 when he was 17. Here's an example of an ICOM handheld radio, an ICT7H, that has a BNC connector that connects the antenna. The key advantage of the BNC system is that it takes only a quarter turn to connect or disconnect. This one is the female connector. You can see where the pin is inserted. And this is the male side, which has a small pin in the center. The female side has these two little pins here. The male is positioned over the pins, pressed in, and turned a quarter turn. There's a little spring inside that holds the connector tight. BNC connectors are used quite a bit outside of ham radio, used for connecting various cables together, such as for networking, video signals, timing signals, instrumentation, and so on. The BNC connector was once quite common on handhelds. It is possible to use an automobile rooftop antenna that has a BNC connector on the end, like this one I acquired many years ago. Occasionally, you see these used in HF equipment where the signal is small, such as QRP or receive-only equipment. Here's an example of a small software-defined radio that I've often used to create demonstrations for these videos. It has a BNC connector, and here's an old 80-meter PSK31 kit I built that uses a BNC connector also. You see fewer and fewer BNC connectors in ham radio, although, as I mentioned, they're used extensively outside ham radio. One of the problems is that nearly all mag mount antennas, as well as other styles of commercially built antennas, use PL259 or SO239 connectors these days. So, what is a ham to do? Well, enter the world of adapters. For any gender of any connector, there are adapters to connect between them. You can get these easily, and they usually cost only a few dollars. This particular adapter is ubiquitous. On this end is a male BNC to connect to the handheld. On this end is a female connector, the equivalent of an SO239. This allows you to connect a PL259 antenna cable to a BNC connector on the radio. Note the two separate knurled rings. You use this one to connect to the PL259 and tighten it finger tight. Then you use this one to connect to the BNC socket. When it comes to attaching BNC connectors to coax, I'd advise connecting a PL259 rather than attempting to attach the BNC connector directly.
BNC connectors are rather complex internally. I tried connecting one to some coax many years ago, gave up the attempt in frustration, and swore I wouldn't try it again. Let's look at the next most commonly used connector, the SMA, or Subminiature Version A. Like the BNC, these are used for lower power. The photo you see here from Wikipedia shows a standard male SMA connector. It threads over the female connector and you can see that there's a pin in the middle that will go into the female socket. And here is a female SMA connector. The male connector screws over it so the female has threads on the outside and a receptacle for the pin. By the way, it's possible to have SMA connectors that are female as far as the threads go, but male as far as the pin goes, such as is used in Wi-Fi equipment today. But let's stick with the ham radio convention. There was a mild uproar in the ham radio community when the Chinese Oxing and Beofeng radios hit our shores. Contrary to convention, the radio has the male connector and the antenna the female. Why the uproar besides simply doing things differently? The answer is that the male, and thus the pin, is on the radio side. See how small that pin is? If it gets bent, it's very difficult to straighten it, and multiple flexing of the pin will cause it to break. On the other hand, the female is much sturdier. So it's good to put the pin on the antenna side, then if it gets bent, you may have to replace the small antenna, but not the whole radio. Okay, let's suppose you have an older Beofang that has the male connector and you want to use it with a mag mount roof antenna in your vehicle that has a PL259 connector. Is there an adapter? As I noted earlier, there are adapters for everything. Here's such an adapter with female SMA on one end and female SO239 on the other. It screws down into the Beofeng antenna connector. Then the PL259 goes here. Note that if you tighten the PL259 too much, it will end up tightening the SMA connector too. So be gentle and don't put too much stress on the connector. The newer Beofeng radios have the opposite convention and are more like the Japanese radios in that regard. I thought I'd throw in one of the more exotic connectors, Type N, developed by Paul Neal in the 1940s. You don't see it much in ham radio unless you're using high power VHF or UHF, such as 500 watts or more. You want to use low loss coax with that. The N connector is specifically designed so that there's no impedance bump, hence no generation of reflected waves. This gets particularly important at VHF and UHF and above. You can get both the male and female in 50 ohm versions and also 75 ohm. The N connector is also waterproof. Occasionally, you'll see end connectors on HF accessories, so it's nice to know what they look like. These photos from Wikipedia show a female connector on the left and a male connector on the right. To give you an idea of the complexity of the end connector, here are the assembly instructions found in the ARRL antenna book. Of course, you can order coax with end connectors already attached in a variety of lengths as shown on the DX Engineering website. This gives you an overview of the most common RF connectors that hams use. Bottom line, for HF generally, the PL259 and SO239 are by far the most common and are also used for VHF and UHF extensively. The BNC connector has lots of use outside ham radio, but its use in ham radio is gradually fading. The SMA connector is used for low power handheld radios and their flexible antennas. Last, the Type N is used for high power work on VHF, UHF, and above, and occasionally you'll see these in HF installations. Are there other connectors used for RF? Of course. The ARRL Antenna Handbook contains a several page chart that shows the dimensions for lots of connectors.
Most of these are relatively rare in amateur radio. So, there you go. Cables are terminated in connectors which are attached to sockets or other adapters. At some point, you may want to try your hand at attaching these coax connectors yourself. And you can save some money doing that, particularly for shorter jumper cables. Our photo for this episode is actually a video taken in Silverton, Colorado a few days ago. I love how all those parts on the locomotive work together to make the thing move. The train is leaving Silverton for the three and a half hour journey down to Durango. It's high tourist season right now and they run three trains a day. If you found this video useful, please go ahead and share it. You can subscribe to my channel so that you can get notification of future videos. In case you found this video particularly helpful, I have a tip jar on my YouTube channel page and also on my website at ke0og.net and I gratefully acknowledge those who have supported my channel in this way. The whole purpose of this series is to answer your questions about ham radio, especially those of interest to those new to the hobby. You can pose a question at www.ke0og.net slash ask hyphen Dave. Until we next meet, this is Dave Kassler, KE0OG, saying 73.